Listen, okay, I know it's impossible to avoid the spoilers at this point. I mean, it's everywhere. It's been everywhere since like the day this game came out, but in the off chance that you have avoided every single spoiler for this game thus far, we are talking full spoilers here in this video for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. If you're sticking around at this point, I imagine it's because you played the game or you don't care about spoilers. If you're leaving, hit that thumbs up button on your way out. And okay, they live up to the name of the game. It's called Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League and well, you do exactly that. To be honest, you do so in an incredibly anticlimactic and sometimes very unceremonious way and in ways that I didn't feel very comfortable with. You know, characters like The Flash and even Superman, the final Justice League boss battle in this game, have them just fall over and die. It is such a bummer. And honestly, for me going into this, playing through that story, what bummed me out the most was that this was the first time we were introduced to Rocksteady's version of the Justice League, the Arkhamverse Canon's version of the Justice League. But I didn't want to kill them all, man. I mean, okay, with the Flash and with Green Lantern, there are other people who have taken up that mantle, but with some of the other characters, especially Batman, it was very upsetting. It ended up being one of my biggest negatives because not only did they end up killing off these iconic characters, but they did so in a way that didn't feel like it had weight to it. The only character that ended up having a death that I thought was incredible and had such a huge moment surrounding it was Wonder Woman's. But you see, ever since then, plenty of people have been theorizing that there's some inconsistencies with the Justice League in this game. They've been pointing out and theorizing that this may not be the definitive Justice League members that were you know, they might not be the original versions of the Justice League here in this game that we're killing. One of the first things that people immediately pointed out is that earlier on in the game, when you have an encounter with the Flash in the Batman Museum, right before Batman starts hunting you down, Captain Boomerang cuts off his finger. And this becomes a focal point of the game at one point. You use his finger to access another part of the Hall of Justice. And then, well, after Batman hunts you down and then beats the living crap out of the Flash and sends him back up to Brainiac's ship, he returns during his boss battle with all 10 fingers on both of his hands. A lot of people also pointed out that, you know, when you kill Green Lantern, the shield around Brainiac's ship doesn't end up going down, not until King Shark ends up obtaining the Green Lantern ring and destroying the shields himself. That one I don't think is as airtight. The shield around Brainiac's ship doesn't look to be a Green Lantern construct that's protecting it, so I'm not entirely sure what was happening there. But nevertheless, the other piece of evidence regarding Green Lantern's death is that when you kill him, the ring doesn't fly off to go choose another person. Of course, as per Green Lantern lore, that is exactly what should happen when a Green Lantern dies. And you know, it doesn't usually work within comics that you can just take a Green Lantern ring and then all of a sudden be able to use it. Not to mention the fact that after King shark was able to destroy the shields he ended up wanting to turn on the actual suicide squad a comic story and a friend of the channel pointed out that the ring itself is technology it can be hacked into it can be tampered with so you know on brainiac's ship we could still have the original green lantern and the one that we fought was a copy and that green lantern ring still has the effects of brainiac's mind control tied to it so when king shark was wielding it he ended up being controlled by brainiac for a second and wanted to turn on the squad and then the last big piece of evidence that people pointed out was that superman got stabbed in the chest, very deep in the chest by a giant shard of kryptonite. And I mean, that's the guy's biggest freaking weakness. It should have killed him. Wonder Woman says herself, it should have killed him. So clearly something is going on here because afterwards Superman just shows up pretty much without a scratch. He looks like he's completely normal. At this point, people have deduced that the Justice League we fight in this game is not the original Justice League, but rather clones that Brainiac has created for us to face off against. And while there's plenty of evidence stacking towards this theory being true, or at least plenty of evidence to support the theory itself, a lot of people still aren't 100% sure, and people aren't even sure if this could mean that the Justice League is gonna return in future DLC expansions for the game. That is until the king of Arkham videos, the guy who's aptly named Batman Arkham videos, dropped a bombshell yesterday. You see, Arkham Videos noticed that in the game, you can find 12 calendars throughout all of Metropolis that each highlight a specific date. These calendars range from January through to December. And funnily enough, the final calendar that you can actually find is in the middle of Centennial Park. This is where the Superman statue is. This is where Batman dies. And this last calendar, which is for December, actually has the date marked with a bat logo. Batman Arkham Videos 
video says, well, obviously all of these calendars are a nod to, well, Calendar Man, which Rocksteady loves to use for crazy hidden Easter eggs. And Batman Arkham Videos was able to deduce that if you order each of these calendars by month and then convert the day that's marked on each calendar into a letter, you know, for example, the first calendar is January 8th, which would mean that if you convert that to a letter, it would be H. Essentially, if you read it out this way, it creates a message and it's a pretty freaking big one at that and it is too clear of a message for this to be a mistake it feels like batman arkham videos here has absolutely cracked the code and what does that message spell out well if you convert all those numbers into letters across all 12 calendars scattered along metropolis well it spells he will return okay <laughs> i have problems with suicide squad kill the justice all right i have a lot of issues i have gone over i critiqued the game a plenty in my official review but wow what <laughs> what a plant here from rocksteady man i gotta tip my hat i gotta give my credit where credit is due this is a damn cool easter egg and more than that what a good find from my good friend batman arkham videos this dude is a genius and i think this is pretty cut and dry this is very clearly saying that batman will return in years past whether it be arkham asylum having a secret wall you can destroy that teases arkham city or whether it's arkham city which had that secret compartment on a boat that teases arkham knight and the fact that scarecrow wasn't dead or whether it's arkham knight where one of the challenge maps had a tease towards batman arkham vr there's always something in these rocksteady games that hint at a future project that they're working on and in this instance i don't think it's a future Future project being another game I think very clearly considering the live service nature what they're trying to hint at here is that Batman is not dead and that Batman will return this almost certainly confirms the theory that people have been running with that comic storian has been running with that the justice league we fight in this game are clones now that doesn't automatically make better the things that i have problems with in terms of the actual killing of the justice league in this game but it certainly creates a pretty interesting narrative that i would absolutely be invested in to come back to this game for months on and to see how they want to wrap this all up if we're bringing back the justice league if we're gonna go get them off a of brainiac ship how does all of that go down and if they are bringing back the arkham batman does that mean that kevin conroy maybe had recorded some extra lines is there going to be something involving his return that would make my heart very happy any way that we can just hear more of kevin conroy's batman would very much put a smile on my face and again it doesn't just write away the issues that i have with the game i still have plenty of problems with things like mission structure i think as a live service it's still missing a lot of elements i wish the boss battles were better i still wish that even if we weren't killing the original version of the flash or superman that they didn't just fall over and die it's not a perfect game by any means but this does seem pretty interesting to me the only thing that i do wish outside of this really hidden easter egg that batman arkham videos had found is that throughout the main story itself they made it a bit more obvious for the audience that they were going to bring back these justice league members that we were killing just mainly because you know for the hardcores like myself for a lot of the other people out there that were theorizing that maybe we weren't killing the original justice league members but rather clones of them they don't know that they're not aware of what brainiac can do and they don't think like that and so as a live service game that needs to sell well and needs to retain an audience in order to have a healthy ecosystem i don't think it was a good idea to make it so hard to tell that we were killing clones because well it created a ton of backlash online and a lot of people out there that aren't hardcore dc fans and don't look into this stuff just wrote the game off entirely who knows though if they start bringing back some justice league members if there's some cool cutscenes and there's a fun narrative it might reel some people in we're just gonna have to wait and see this easter egg creates a bit of a promise though i just hope Rock City will deliver on it. And with that being said, let me now kick it to you guys. Sound off with your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you think that the Justice League we fight in this game are clones? And also, do you think the Justice League is gonna be returning in post-launch DLC? Sound off with all your thoughts in the comments section below. Again, a big shout outs to the theories from Comic Story and then as well, the Easter egg video from Batman Arkham videos. I'm gonna link both their channels in the description box below if you wanna go check them out. But also, if you wanna keep up to date on Suicide Squad, kill the Justice League things, I got you locked right here on this channel. So Subscribe, turn on those notifications. I'll keep you up to date on this game. With that being said, I've been Caboose. I'll see you guys later.